Okay, uh, we're going to start with the second dot point uh, for the ecosystems at risk uh, syllabus uh, for geography and we're looking at vulnerability and resilience of ecosystems and what we're talking about here, there's sort of two overarching things that we've got or concepts we've got to look at. Vulnerability, vulnerability referring to how sensitive an ecosystem is to an event and then resilience being how well an ecosystem to, can recover. Um, really we're looking at a few things here. The impacts and the impacts can be both short term and long term, uh, ST and LT, and they're either from natural stresses or human induced modification. So they're either natural or they're human, um, which I think is fairly straightforward to grasp there. I guess the main thing that we need to be aware of is this part here of the dot point um, as well, which really links back to the first dot point on functioning, energy flows, cycles, and the like. And as we were just saying, it's really important when we're looking at, especially, um, oh, I mean, at all units really, to be aware of the dot point that was previous and the dot points coming up. And a good student will be able to link um, each dot point to the one previous and the one upcoming. So let's get started. Um, all ecosystems exist in dynamic equilibrium in that they are always changing. Um, and the more dynamic uh, an ecosystem, um, tend to be the ecosystems that uh, are less vulnerable and more, more resilient. Um, so dynamic equilibrium is the state in which an ecosystem is constantly existing. There is always change. Um, and really what we're looking at here is well, how do these ecosystems that are constantly in change, how do they become vulnerable and how are they resilient against stresses? There are a whole range, there are four different uh, causes um, of ecosystem vulnerability. Biodiversity, the location, the extent and the linkages. Biodiversity, we're talking about genetic diversity, species diversity, the ecological diversity. Generally, we would consider the greater the biodiversity, the less vulnerable the ecosystem. For extent, uh, extent or size, Generally, the greater the size, the less vulnerable the ecosystem. Ecosystems that are restricted and are relatively small um, can be potentially more vulnerable. The location, an ecosystem's proximity to stress um, will impact its vulnerability. Factors such as latitude, altitude, distance from the sea um, will impact its climate and therefore also have an impact on its vulnerability. And then also the linkages. How linked up and interdependent is uh, this ecosystem on other factors um, that are outside of its control? Stresses, I've put it into four little boxes here and you'll see it on the next slide as well. Uh, stresses, we have natural stress events and we have human stress events. Um, that's just straight from back at the first dot, from the dot point. Furthermore, the stresses can be catastrophic. They occur very quickly, immediately, um, or they're gradual, occur over a slow rate of time. The way I like to teach this unit is to then, ha is to then break this into four and have a natural stress, natural stress, and a human stress, and a human stress that one, those catastrophic and gradual, and have sample studies or small examples of these um, that we can then look at. We'll go through them now. So... I like to look at a natural gradual um, stress uh, on the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, the human gradual stress is our ecosystem is the, our oceans, um, and especially through overfishing. A natural catastrophic is the one that's uh, done in a lot of the text is the Mount St Helens, but I still think a great uh, sample study. And the human catastrophic is the more recent uh, oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, but you could also look at the oil spill in the Exxon uh, the Exxon Valdez oil spill. We'll talk quickly about resilience. Um, resilience is, uh, is a natural function of an ecosystem and it's its ability to uh, adapt to change and restore that dynamic equilibrium um, that we talked about after an episode of stress and that stress, as we said, can be either natural or man-made. There are a few factors here. I guess we sort of look at the, the stress point. How much that ecosystem is, uh, is affected is going to basically be reflected in the elasticity, um, the rate of recovery. The, the, the less the stress, the more likely we are to see 
uh, align something like this here. Time obviously is crucial. Um, the amplitude is the threshold of strain, which uh, here we go, which we can't return to that natural state, and the malleability, the difference between the ecosystem's first and its uh, before it, its pre-stress and its post-stress level. We understand that ecosystems are constantly uh, changing and evolving, and they are in this uh, state of dynamic equilibrium. Um, but we're really looking here at the point of stress and then how the stress changes the ecosystem. Uh, changes as a result of human activity. I remember I said at the start, we're going to look at a few things here, the food webs um, and the, the, the cycles and the um, cycles and food webs um, and how they are impacted. And really what we're talking about there is we're coming back to, we're coming back to ecosystem functioning which is really that first dot point. And a good student will be able to identify the, the first dot point and ecosystem functioning and be able to talk about that and how um, ecosystems become vulnerable and therefore how that impacts on, its fu on their functioning. Uh, here's just a quick diagram, really, that we could go through. Um, there's, this comes out of, I think, an old HSC or an old trial exam. Um, and a student here could be asked about factors that could make this ecosystem here vulnerable, factors that would make it resilient. You could be asked about the uh, energy flows and the cycles, many things to talk about here. I'd like you to just have a look at it I'll, and maybe just pause it now and think about well, what are the different uh, cycles here, what are the different energy flows, and then maybe think to yourself, all right, well, what are the uh, levels of biodiversity like here? How large is this ecosystem? How might this ecosystem's location make it more or less vulnerable? How might linkages in this ecosystem make it more or less vulnerable? What might be some stresses that would cause this ecosystem um, to become uh, or, or to have more or less elasticity? How malleable would this ecosystem be to, uh, to change? Obviously, the smaller the malleability, the more resilient, the greater the malleability, the less resilient the ecosystem. Okay, so that sort of brings us to the end of uh, uh, vulnerability and resilience as a dot point. Um, look, you, obviously this is a starting point, and from here you would then go through and have a look at some of the sample studies. We're going to talk about some of those in a bit more detail in the next, um, in the next uh, dot point on uh, management and protection. Okay, thanks very much.